Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jassim Azawi. The recent visit to Baghdad by Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad revealed Iraq's political and sectarian fault lines. Many Iraqi Shia hailed him as a great friend, bearing economic gifts. On the other hand, many Sunnis took to the streets, calling the Iranian president a murderer coming to view the spoils of war. The dilemma facing the U.S. is how to contain Iranian influence in Iraq and how to convince Tehran to stop supporting armed militias believed to be responsible for much of the violence in the country. This is a dilemma that is likely to last for many more years to come. Rawi Araga reports. These arrival scenes do not only mark the first time an Iranian president has set foot in Iraq in more than 40 years. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's visit has been hailed as a turning point for the region and a show of strength for America's arch rival. The U.S. has to accept the region as it is. The Iraqi people do not like America. He called on the United States to leave Iraq, but can Iran's influence push the Americans out? These scenes were a reminder of how key Iraqi players have long-standing ties with Tehran since the days of their mutual enmity to Saddam Hussein, ties that are now taking material form. The Iranian president signed seven agreements and announced a billion-dollar reconstruction loan, one tied to the use of Iranian contractors. But Ahmadinejad's message was very clear. Take his meeting with Iraq's most influential Shia politician, Abdelaziz al-Hakim of the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq, or the fact that the announced Iranian projects focused mainly on Shia-dominated cities. <laughs> Intentional or not, Ahmadinejad's generosity appeared divisive, at least here in Iraq's Sunni heartland of Fallujah, where hundreds of Sunnis protested against his visit. This visit could potentially exacerbate existing ethnic tensions and various sectarian divisions within Iraq. And I think both the Iraqi political establishment and the Iranian regime are cognizant of this and are therefore very careful not to see this, not to make this uh, normalization and warming of relations as some sort of a Shiite alliance, but look at it as a natural warming of relations between two, uh, two neighboring countries. U.S. officials have said they hope the visit would see a commitment from Iran to stop its suspected backing of Iraqi militias. Others argue Iraq's situation is far more complicated than that. Iran would not wish to see an open, democratic, successful Iraq next door indicating that the American invasion has been a success. But at the same time, Iran does not want to have a failed state and chaos next door. That would be disastrous for it. So I think they'll continue to play perhaps a minor spoiling role, helping here, hindering there, et cetera, et cetera, for quite a long time. President Ahmadinejad's visit brought into sharp focus how Iraq has become the largest battlefield between Washington and Tehran. And the victor of that confrontation is likely to dominate the direction and destiny of the Middle East for decades to come. Rawi Ragh for Inside Iraq. To put President Ahmadinejad's visit to Iraq in perspective, I'm joined from Washington by Rich Shmir, Director of Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs, Iraq Office. And from Tehran by Sadiq Zibakalam, Professor of Political Science at Tehran University. And from Cairo by Abdullah Lashal, former assistant to Egyptian Foreign Minister and lecturer of political science in several Egyptian universities. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. Ziba Kalam, let's start with the reaction of the Iraqis who are very well known to be hospitable. What makes you, what do you, how do you view that the demonstration we saw against the visit of Ahmadinejad? I think the demonst uh, demonstration uh, was a reality by, uh, by Sunni. But uh, it's, uh, it's very hard to, uh, to uh, understand and to, ap to apprehend the U.S. accusation uh, against the Islamic Iran that uh, Iran has been supporting uh, Sunni extremists. Now, had, had that been the case, and, and, Iran, and if uh, the, the Islamic regime was supporting uh, Sunni extremism, obviously we would not have been uh, observing uh, the anti-Iranian demonstration. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just an accusation uh, uh, fabricated by, by the U.S. administration against Iran that Iran has been uh, supporting and arming uh, 
um, the Sunni e extremism. And, and I must add that uh, so far there has been no uh, substantial proof that uh, Iran has been uh, uh, doing uh, what the United States tries to accuse Iran of. I must compliment you about the clever way of not answering my question, Rich Schmierer. Those <laughs> demonstrators who appeared in Fallujah and others, they, they basically uh, were upset about the arm, army and the money of Iran supporting the armed militias, won't they? Well, I certainly don't think the U.S. had anything to do with organizing Sunni demonstrations against the visit of President Ahmadinejad. Uh, the U.S. does continue to have significant concerns about the role that Iran is playing in Iraq. Uh, we certainly do wish to see Iran and Iraq have cordial and productive relations. They're neighboring countries. Uh, it's important for both countries that the relationship be uh, a good relationship, uh, as with all of, other, all of Iraq's other neighbors. But we continue to have serious concerns about the activities uh, of Iran in Iraq and the training and supporting of extremists in Iran in Iraq uh, that we see coming from Iran. Abdullah Lashal, you have no axe to grind between these two gentlemen, an Iranian and an American. How do you view this uh, Iranian policy towards Iraq? Is it basically to destabilize the country to, a, a to an extent that will force the Americans out, or is it to keep their options open for a future? Uh, in the future when the U.S. has an exit strategy? No, I, I would like to take Iran as uh, a big state in the area. Uh, one day, uh, she f it feels that it had been attacked by Iraq, and now the opportunity came to its own doors, and it's trying to, to fill the vacuum that the Arabs had uh, created in Iraq after the collapse of the former regime. Uh, so Iran has uh, security uh, interest in Iraq, but as, at the same time, Iraq has become uh, the object of scramble between Iran and the United States. So I think both of them want the other to leave for the sake of the other. Iranians wanted the United States to leave so as to uh, the uh, Iraq would be very uh, amenable to the policies of Iran, and this is legitimate as well from the point of view of politics of Iran. And the United States, as occupying power, doesn't want to. Uh, recognize that fact, and uh, uh, it wants to, to make a different face. It's uh, a, a, a power which had been invited by the government, and uh, there is no talk about uh, occupying character of the American forces. So I think that uh, this is interplay between the two forces. Both of them are lurking for each other. Iran wanted Iraq only purely. Uh, for its own interests, and the United States wanted also to uh, minimize Well, let us see the how that is going to play out. As two practitioners of real politics, Rich Schmierer, neither the United States nor Iran are going to leave Iraq, at least not for the time being. What do you, what do you make of uh, Ahmadinejad's uh, call from Baghdad for the U.S. to leave? Are you going to heed that call? Well, the United States is absolutely committed to the success of Iraq. Um, the Iraqis know that, uh, the Iranians and I think everyone else knows of our absolute commitment to the success uh, of the new Iraq. And so we will remain engaged appropriately in the new Iraq in whatever means are required to help ensure that they successfully stabilize and, and move their country forward. How about that, forward. those means? Uh, are you talking about breaking the grip of Iranians on Iraq? Well, uh, I'm not saying there's a grip of Iranians on Iraq. I do think there are many in Iraq who are concerned with the level of influence and the attempts by Iran uh, to establish influence in Iraq. Uh, I know there are Iraqis concerned about that. But from the point of view of the United States, what we want to see is, I think, what certainly the large majority of Iraqis want to see and what I think the Iranians would find in their best interest, and that is a successful functioning Iraq, which would not be a threat to its neighbors, uh, any of its neighbors, would be a, an economic boon to the region and would, in general, stabilize and help the region prosper. I think Iran should be uh, wanting that. We certainly want that, and we absolutely know the Iraqis want that. So that is our goal, to assist the Iraqis in their efforts to establish such a state. Ziba Kalam, at the back of Iranians' mind, there is this fear, there is this concern that the ultimate goal of the United States is actually changing of regime in Tehran, exactly like it happened in Iraq. Is that the drive behind Iran's policy towards Iraq? Yes, to some extent that is, uh, because uh, 
the uh, uh, Islamic regime uh, perceives the United States having uh, a long-term goal uh, uh, in the Middle East, and that uh, is uh, to, to overthrow the um, Islamic regime um, in Tehran in uh, much the same way that, that, that they overthrew the, 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 the Saddam regime in Iraq. But I must uh, respond to Mr. Shmir by saying that uh, uh, Iran has nothing to gain from uh, destabilized Iraq, uh, fabrica uh, disfabricated Iraq, and uh, unsecure Iran. Far from it. If you, if you, if you notice that uh, there are seven large uh, um, cooperation uh, a pact between uh, uh, Iran and Iraq, and we don't know, by the way, the content Iran of those agreements signed between Tehran and Baghdad. You know, we, so far the Iraqi government and Jalal Talbani has never revealed the content of those, con, uh, those agreements. But, but, but we know that they are, they are uh, basically uh, um, construction, uh, petrochemical, electricity, hospitals, etc. Now, uh, I don't think there are any secrets uh, about them. What I'm trying to say is that the bond, the historical bondage between Iranian and Iraqis are far more deeper and stronger than, uh, than uh, present government in, in Iran, in Iraq, and, uh, and for that matter, in, in, in the United States. Abdullah Lash, do you years, buy that line? You know, there is a brotherly love to suddenly between Baghdad and Tehran, and all is forgiven, and uh, the only spoiler in the region is the United States. As, as soon as the Yankees are gone, you know, leave us alone, we're going to love each other. Do you buy that argument? No, I think that in, in, in Iraq, uh, the scene had been prepared uh, very carefully uh, for Iran. And Iran uh, is very sure that uh, the Shiite majority there are very much tempted to cooperate with Iran. And if they had the choice between Iran and the United States, they would choose Iran. And this is one of the inhibitions of the United States if uh, the United States is willing to attack Iran. In this case, uh, a great disturbance would be taking place in Iraq itself uh, with the danger for the American forces in Iraq. Uh, so uh, I think that this um, underpinnings of uh, Shiism in, uh, in Iraq uh, had, had been very high and very acute, uh, especially with the confrontation between Iran uh, and Iraq uh, during the 80s. So uh, I feel that Iran has legitimate security interests, but in fact, uh, because the United States is there and because of that uh, Shiite factor, uh, it's going to disturb other factors that are very important uh, for um, the Arab world, which is, in fact, uh, absent totally from the scene of Iraq. Rich Mirad, uh, what Abdullah Shash Ali is saying is that you brought it on yourself, you know, while you are pl playing by the rules of democracy and let elections and let power come uh, to the surface. The people who came on the heels of the American tanks, they are now in power, but they are not aligned with the U.S. They are allied, allied with Tehran. So you brought it on yourself. Well, the, uh, the Iraqi government represents the Iraqi people, and we're perfectly comfortable with that. The Iraqi government will continue to have elections, and the people in power uh, do need to provide services and respond to the people's will and the people's interests, and that's what we wanted to see. Uh, so we're perfectly satisfied with that. We are supportive of de democracy and representative government, uh, and we believe that each country should be moving in that direction, and, and each country will determine in, on its own how it wishes to pursue that, but we will support those who support that goal. Um, so we're perfectly comfortable with that. Uh, your, co your colleague from Egypt, I think, made a very good point. Uh, in pointing out that there is really an absence of Arab representation, representation from the neighboring Arab countries and from the Arab countries in general uh, in Iraq. And, and we would certainly encourage our uh, colleagues in the Arab world to also increase their interaction uh, with the Iraqis. Rich Mira, thank you. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, I'm going to ask Ziba Kalam about the linkage between Iran's nuclear ambition and Iraq. Stay with us. How can we tolerate this? We have lost hundreds of thousands of people since the 1980s, and today we live under the regime of clerics. The Iranian revolution has been exported to Iraq. Salman al-Hamad, Sunni Arab tribal leader.